Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 2023 Acura Integra A-Spec with a six-speed manual transmission. Now, when I heard that Acura was bringing the Integra back, I was happy because, in my opinion, the Integra is actually the most iconic Acura, even more so than the NSX or the Legend because the Integra was just more ubiquitous, it was more affordable. You saw them everywhere back in the 90s and the 2000s, and when they replaced it with the dual-pronged attack of the TSX and the RSX, the brand never fully recovered the sales that the Integra used to provide it. So now, in what's probably a very smart business move, they've brought it back. But when I heard that you could get it with a manual transmission, I was even happier. So that's what this one has. I was very excited to drive this car, and today I'm going to review it for you. We're going to go over all the details, the engine and the transmission, the styling, we'll measure out the cargo room, we'll look at the passenger room, we will look at the convenience features and the safety features, which there are quite a lot of for a manual transmission. And as always, if some of that sounds interesting and some of it sounds boring, check the description below for timestamps. So we'll start with the engine and the transmission, and the Acura Integra A-Spec comes with the 1.5-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. We're looking at 200 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque. It's a very nice engine, very refined, smooth revving for a four-cylinder, and with the six-speed manual, you also get a helical limited slip differential that limits torque steer, and it improves handling, and if you really wanted to abuse your clutch, would allow you to draw 11s in a parking lot with a front-wheel drive car, although I do not recommend that. It's interesting that Honda slash Acura was very tardy to the party when it comes to turbocharged engines in their road cars. They've only really recently started doing it over the last few years. If you know their history in motorsports, they were dominant with turbo engines in Formula One in the 80s, but they finally brought that to the street, and this car is definitely better off for it. Doesn't rev quite as high as the old sporty Integras would, but it's still a great engine and it's a very quick car. Now we're gonna start talking about the styling, and I think Acura did a fantastic job on this. Now, much like the original Integra, this one is based on the Civic, and much like the original Integra, they went to great lengths to kind of mask that a little bit. It's not a classic GM badge engineering job. I think they did an even better job with the new Integra. It looks classier, a little bit bigger, a little bit more expensive than the Civic. And it's the little details that really set it apart and make this look like the upmarket car that it is and it feels like. I really like the 18-inch wheels that they've put on this A-Spec model. You have the Jewel Eye LED headlights as standard on this car, along with chicane LED daytime running lights and the chicane LED taillights. If you don't know what a chicane is, that's kind of a quick left-right on a racetrack. Sometimes they put them in the middle of a straightaway to slow things down. So that is where the name chicane LED daytime running lights and taillights comes from. You also get the A-Spec Sport Appearance Package on all A-Spec models, and that gives you the black window trim, a rear spoiler, the gloss black rear diffuser, and the gloss black lower bumper in the front. So those are all nice touches as well. On the interior of this A-Spec model, you have the leatherette trim with the micro suede inserts. It's a very nice interior, it's very comfortable, and the micro suede, kind of the Alcantara, gives you a very sporty feel. I like those seats a lot, reminds me of my old WRX STI. This particular one is finished in red, which is a very trendy color that I haven't been a huge fan of, but in this particular car, I kind of like how it looks. It's a slightly darker shade of red than some of the brighter ones that I've seen in new cars. So I do like the interior a lot, and I even like the red interior color. Maybe red guts are growing on me in my old age. I don't know. Now we're going to measure out the cargo area in the rear hatch. So for that, we will use our handy-dandy laser measuring tape. The length of the rear cargo area from the bottom of the back seat to the back of the cargo area is three feet. The width of the rear cargo area at its absolute widest point in between the ELS Studio subwoofer and this little cubby hole right there is four feet. The width of the cargo area at its main point in between that wall and that wall three feet four inches. 
and the width of the cargo area at the back at its narrowest point in between those two little pinch bits, two feet and 10 inches. The length of the cargo area with the back seat folded down is approximately five feet, five inches. I say approximately because that does depend on where you have that front seat set, but it's at kind of a mid position right now. So approximately five feet and five inches. The maximum usable height of the cargo area is two feet and two inches, and that would be kind of towards the rear of the cargo area right there. The minimum usable height of the cargo area is one feet and three inches, and you can see that the uh, hatch kind of slopes down so that one feet and three inches would be from the rearmost point. And if you need to lift something into the rear of your Acura Integra, you will have to lift it two feet and 10 inches off the ground. That is kind of a high load in, especially for such a low car, but you can see kind of where the rear bumper is compared to the hatch opening. That's why you get that. And just for fun, we'll have a look under here. Doesn't look like we get a spare tire in this one. We have uh, an air pump. In theory, you might be able to fit a spare tire in there because it looks like it's shaped for one, but they just give you this from the factory. So there you go. That is your cargo area in a new Acura Integra. Now we're going to have a look at the passenger space. And for this, I like to use myself. I'm six foot five. So let's see if I can sit behind myself in an Acura Integra. All right, so as we can see here, I can sit in the front, my knees are not touching, I have enough headroom, okay, but there goes a charming person on a motorcycle, but when I get in the back, my knees are up against the seat, ah, my headroom's a little cramped, that sporty looking sloping back roof. Uh, two people six foot five cannot probably sit behind themselves. That's how much room is behind my seat. When uh, the driver's seat is set to my position, I could move it forward a little bit and still drive, but left to my own devices, that's what I would do. So that is your back seat room in an Acura Integra. It's a little bit limited, but as long as you're not a big giant ape like me, you'll probably fit just fine. Now we're going to start talking about the convenience features on this car and I want to start off by saying I really think Acura did this model correctly. If you want an Integra with a six-speed manual transmission, they only offer it in one package, the A-Spec package, which is actually a higher level trim package on the Integra. They didn't put the stick shift in a base model. So I think it's smart from a manufacturing perspective because you're limiting the number of builds and quite frankly there is a limited market for manual transmission cars and one of the big complaints that manual transmission buyers or at least people who claim they would buy a manual transmission if it were available in some dream spec of theirs they often say I don't want the base model I want a nicer one well here you go this is a nicer one with a stick shift so get out there and buy it before they inevitably stop building it because you didn't buy it We'll move on to the actual features in the car and in the back seat, we do have a center armrest and we have USB ports to charge your devices for your back seat passengers. You will also notice it's just the red leatherette back there. Your back seat passengers will have to live without the micro suede trim that you get on the front seats. Now we're gonna move up front and talk about the convenience features up here and they are numerous. All of the stick shift Integras come with the keyless access, of course, with push button start and Acura personalized settings so you can key various things to the key that you're using to get into the car. You also have the walk away auto lock so you can set it up to where you don't even need to touch the little piece on the door handle to lock it. You can just walk away from the car with the key fob and it will lock itself. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard on these cars and it is wireless. That's another nice upgrade. 
You have ambient LED cabin lighting and door accents. This isn't the type of ambient LED lighting where you can change the colors, unfortunately, although maybe that's getting a little bit played out. But I do like it on the doors. It does look very nice. And the LED cabin lighting just kind of lights up the footwells and the shifter area a little bit. As we mentioned before, the leatherette trim with the micro suede inserts look very nice. Now, of course, we do have a touchscreen in the center. That is a nine inch touchscreen display. But weirdly, the display for the gauges is even bigger. That is a 10.2 inch digital instrument cluster in the middle there. Um, they do some interesting things with it. I do like how the center part of it shows you the car when you're on the road and other vehicles around you that the car's camera senses. That's kind of aping Tesla a little bit, but it is a nice look. I do wish that the gauge cluster was a little bit more customizable in this car, but you kind of get what you get. It looks good, it works well, but I just feel like car companies put so much effort into these digital gauges and then there isn't a whole lot of customization available. Of course, all that's just a software update away if they ever decide to change it, but we will see. One thing I really love in this car is the heads-up display. I drove a Subaru WRX STI, which of course also had a six-speed manual transmission and a turbo engine for three years, and I always wish that that car had a heads-up display. And this one does. Unfortunately, this is a little bit of an issue because you can tell that it was designed to be an automatic transmission car first and then they put a manual transmission in it because the heads up display is missing a couple of key pieces of information that you would want in a stick shift car. It doesn't show you your revs and it doesn't show you what gear you're in. So again, that's another thing that I think Acura could probably change with a software update. I hope that's something that they will consider doing in the future on the six-speed manual transmission Integras because that would be a lot more fun to have that on the heads-up display, especially when you're driving the car hard. Now we're gonna move on to the safety features on this Acura Integra. And if you thought that you were going to get a shiny new smartwatch with your shiny new Acura, I have a little bit of bad news. Acura watch is the term that Acura uses for their active safety features on their vehicles. On this car, that includes the adaptive cruise control, the collision mitigation braking, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, lane keeping assist, and road departure mitigation. Now, some of these features, in my opinion, are pretty cool to have on a stick shift car. Adaptive cruise control is something that not a lot of manual transmission cars have. In this car, the way it works is if you go under 20 miles per hour, it will cancel itself. And as far as I've seen so far, it doesn't even really prompt you to shift because the engine is so tractable that you can actually pull away when you're going 20 miles an hour in sixth gear. You're not gonna pull away very quickly, but the engine doesn't lug. So that's how the adaptive cruise control works with a stick shift. I do plan on making a video about that, so there'll probably be a link in the description just because I find that fascinating. Forward collision warning and the collision mitigation braking, those are cool features to have on a stick shift car too. The lane departure warning and the lane keeping assist, it will beep at you if you're getting out of your lane and or vibrate the steering wheel for you, and it can even kind of control the steering with the road departure mitigation. So you do have pretty much the full suite of standard active safety features that are becoming standard on most new cars these days. Even though this car has a manual transmission, I think that's really cool. You also have the blind spot information system with the rear cross traffic monitor and you have the traffic sign recognition. So if the car's little camera can read the speed limit sign, it will tell you what it is. And we have the front and rear parking sensors and low speed braking control. So it'll beep at you if you're getting close to something when you're trying to park the car and it can slam on the brakes to prevent you from either backing into something or pulling into something up front at very low speeds. It does use the parking sensors to do that. Thank you so much for watching my video on this 2023 Acura Integra. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, and have a fantastic day. And if you didn't like it, do all that stuff anyway. I'll try to make the next video better. Bye-bye.